that what happens is you don't sit around and orchestrate. I want to be inspiring to a lot of people. That's my goal. You look within and you live an authentic life. What do I need? What turns me on? What makes me feel alive? And to, to broaden it, you know, to, to the nth degree is that for some reason, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not a a special human being. I've been lucky and traveled the whole world, been in the interior of Borneo, swum with whales in, in Antarctica, been in every major city. And when I look at the globe, sometimes I think I just, there's nowhere I haven't been, um, at least to, you know, for a short time anyway. But during those travels, I find people courageous, engaged, you know, tribes people, um, people in my neighborhood whom you'll never know. They're never going to, you know, achieve any fame. And, and they're just living an authentic life of what they think is right. And for some reason, I caught on to that young. You know, most kids in, the, in single digits, when you're eight, nine years old, you're not thinking about, you know, unless in a, in a very um, cliched way, oh, one day I'm going to be an astronaut, I'm going to be an Olympian, you know, but you're not really thinking of who you are and what you want to become. And for some reason, I had a fear and a drive very young about this whole life going by too fast. I, I wrote a little essay for third grade, so you're eight, and the essay was, what do, you, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? And so most people in my class were, you know, it was simple. I want to be a nurse. I want to help people. I want to be a firefighter. I want to, you know, but I wrote, well, I, I never got to know any of my grandparents, but I understand that they all lived in their mid, to, to be in their mid-80s or so. So I'm eight now. That means I only have 75 years left. I've already wasted eight. I didn't do enough with that eight. So I, I've, I've had this ticking of the clock, and now I'm older, I'm 71 now. I'm a pretty vital, healthy 71. I don't put any parameters or limitations on this age. I might at 91, but so far, I don't feel any limitations whatsoever. I was a better athlete when I went back to chase the Cuba swim in my 60s than I was in my 20s in all kinds of ways. Um, but somehow for me, the deepest, deepest drive is an appreciation, a gratitude for this life we get to live. And I'm an atheist, so it doesn't come from a God space, even though I respect anybody who feels a God space. I don't. And so what I feel is somehow I got this lucky organism that I'm living every day. I, I got this fortunate beginning in life of health and, and some, you know, privileges. So I've, I've been able to chase my dreams and I haven't grown up in dire poverty. Um, I did go through sexual abuse as a kid and it was traumatizing to this day. It affects my little girl inside. So we all have something, you know, we all, we all suffer heartache and whatnot. But I think honestly, more than, oh, what made you become a champion swimmer? There is that story, but it's a, it's a narrow story, honestly. What, what I'm living is every day I go to sleep every night saying, whoo, I just couldn't have done any more with that day than I did. That's my goal, you know, and that one day might be just to go to the beach with my old dog and take a look at the sunrise. That's good enough. It's not always chasing being a winner. That was younger. That was the ego days. Now my day is just be engaged, be alert, be awake, don't sleep too much, and uh, go to sleep that last final day, whenever that comes, to say, I, I, I wish I had more time. I wish I could have done more. I wish I could have helped more people. I wish I could have experienced more. But what I did, I did the most I could with every waking hour of every day.